In the pages of history, few chapters are as enthralling as the Tudor dynasty. Emerging from the ashes of the Wars of the Roses, the Tudors would not only unite a fractured realm, but also leave an indelible mark on the tapestry of England's destiny. So, without further ado, let's turn back the pages and embark on a journey through the corridors of Tudor power. Welcome to the Tudor Court, where history unfolds. Before starting, remember to click the like and subscribe button to support us in making more interesting videos. The Tudor Ascent the Tudor saga unfolds in the aftermath of the Wars of the Roses, a tumultuous period that left England fragmented and scarred. Enter Henry VII, the patriarch of the Tudor dynasty, whose ascent to the throne in 1485 marked the commencement of a remarkable chapter in English history. Henry VII, often portrayed as a shrewd and calculating monarch, wasted no time in stabilizing the kingdom. His strategic marriage to Elizabeth of York, a union symbolized by the iconic Tudor Rose, united the warring houses of Lancaster and York, laying the foundation for a newfound unity. The Tudor Rose, a powerful emblem that adorned courtly ceremonies and official documents, became synonymous with the dynasty's rise to power. Through astute financial reforms, Henry VII bolstered the royal treasury, providing much-needed stability to a realm ravaged by decades of conflict. Henry VII's reign, characterized by caution and fiscal prudence, set the stage for the Tudor ascent. With the Wars of the Roses firmly in the past, England entered an era of relative peace, laying the groundwork for the opulent reign that would follow. In our exploration of the Tudor ascent, we witnessed the seeds of a dynasty taking root, a dynasty that would not only transform England politically and economically, but would also captivate the imagination of generations to come. The King's Obsession, The Great Matter Henry VIII, a monarch known for his charisma and larger-than-life presence, faced a pressing issue that would echo through the annals of history, the great matter. His marriage to Catherine of Aragon, once celebrated, now weighed heavily on the king's conscience. Married to Catherine for over two decades, Henry's quest for a male heir became an all-consuming obsession. The absence of a male successor fueled doubts about the legitimacy of his lineage triggering a crisis that would redefine the religious and political landscape. Henry's appeal to the Pope for an annulment, because his marriage to Catherine was against divine law, plunged England into a theological maelstrom. The Pope's refusal to annul the marriage set the stage for the seismic event known as the Break with Rome. In the throes of the Great Matter, Henry's dissatisfaction with Catherine coincided with his infatuation with Anne a lady in waiting at court. The king's desire for a male heir and his determination to marry and fueled a series of events that would reshape England's religious identity. To resolve his marital dilemma, Henry severed ties with the Roman Catholic Church, establishing the Church of England with himself at its head. This marked the beginning of the English Reformation, a period of profound religious and political transformation. The great matter had far-reaching consequences. The dissolution of monasteries followed redistributing wealth and power. England, once a bastion of Catholicism, underwent a radical transformation as the Church of England took root. The break with Rome, a divided kingdom. Henry VIII's unyielding pursuit of an annulment from his marriage to Catherine of Aragon led to a definitive moment, the break with Rome. Faced with the Pope's refusal to grant the annulment, Henry took matters into his own hands, severing England from the authority of the Roman Catholic Church. In a bold move, Henry declared himself the supreme head of the Church of England, a decisive step that marked the establishment of a separate ecclesiastical authority. This move not only reflected Henry's desire for personal autonomy, but also laid the foundation for a divided kingdom. The break with Rome initiated a series of religious reforms that rippled across the country. Monasteries, long-standing symbols of Catholicism, faced dissolution as their wealth and power were redistributed. England once a staunch bastion of Roman Catholicism, now grappled with a new religious identity. The Church of England, born out of Henry's quest for marital satisfaction, became the focal point of a divided nation. The clergy, once loyal to Rome, now pledged allegiance to the English crown. Religious practices underwent a profound transformation, giving rise to a distinctively English form of Christianity. The Six Wives and Dynastic Drama Henry VIII's matrimonial odyssey is a saga that reverberates through history, marked by six unions that shape the dynastic fate of the Tudor court. Each marriage, a delicate dance of politics, passion, and personal ambition, 
unfolded against the backdrop of a king's desperate quest for a male heir. Divorced, beheaded, died, divorced, beheaded, survived, this grim rhyme encapsulates the fate of Henry's six wives, Catherine of Aragon and Bullen, Jane Seymour, and of Clevis, Catherine Howard, and Catherine Parr. Catherine of Aragon, the faithful queen, and Bullen, the catalyst for religious upheaval, Jane Seymour, the mother of Henry's long-awaited male heir, and of Clevis, the Flanders mare, Catherine Howard, the ill-fated young bride, and Catherine Parr, the survivor who outlived Henry. The marriages of Henry VIII were not merely personal matters, they were dynastic dramas with far-reaching implications. Divorces, beheadings, and political machinations punctuated this period, shaping the destiny of England and the Tudor legacy. The Heirs and Succession Struggles Henry VIII's desperate pursuit of a male heir finally bore fruit with the birth of his son, Edward VI. However, the joy was short-lived, as Edward's premature death plunged the Tudor court into a succession crisis. The struggle for the English throne unfolded among Henry's daughters, Mary I, daughter of Catherine of Aragon, and Elizabeth I, daughter of and Bullen. Their ascensions marked significant shifts in the religious landscape and political alliances. Mary I, known as Bloody Mary for her attempts to restore Catholicism, faced opposition and struggled to secure a lasting legacy. Elizabeth I, the last Tudor monarch, emerged as a beacon of stability, guiding England through the Elizabethan era. The succession struggles not only shaped the individual reigns of Mary and Elizabeth, but also influenced the broader course of English history. Religious tensions, political alliances, and the quest for legitimacy define this pivotal period. The Tudor Swan Song the later years of Elizabeth I's reign witnessed the culmination of the Tudor legacy. Often referred to as the Elizabethan era, this period marked the zenith of the English Renaissance, cultural flourishing, and naval expansion. Elizabeth's deft political maneuvering and her refusal to marry, earning her the moniker the Virgin Queen, defined an era characterized by a delicate balance of power and an unprecedented cultural renaissance. The Tudor Swan Song, however, also bore witness to challenges, the threat of the Spanish Armada, religious tensions, and the looming question of succession as Elizabeth I remained childless. As Elizabeth's reign drew to a close, so did the Tudor dynasty. With her death in 1603, the Tudor era came to an end, leaving an indelible mark on English history and setting the stage for the Stuart succession. Thank you for joining me on this historical odyssey. The story of Henry VIII and the Tudor dynasty is not merely a chronicle of the past, but a vibrant tapestry that weaves through the fabric of our present. Until we embark on the next exploration through the corridors of history, inviting you to remember and reflect on the enduring echoes of Tudor majesty. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel to support us. See you in the next video.